something that I think could be more accurate than others, the intelligence that is available to the National Football League and how it gets translated to who is invited to attend the draft. 13 players will be at the draft. And I, I put my reporter hat on, the one with the little thing in it that says press, and actually did some work last night for a change to try to figure out how they got to 13, who else they were looking at, why certain names aren't on the list. J.J. McCarthy, for example, not on the list of the 13 attendees. Three quarterbacks are Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May. J.J. McCarthy isn't on the list, I'm told, because they extended him an invitation. He didn't respond, and they just moved on. So those are the four quarterbacks who were invited. Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix were not invited because, I'm told, the league did not regard them as surefire top 15 to 20 draft picks. And they don't want someone to linger in the green room. They don't want someone to come back the next day. And again, I don't know how you get reliable information here because no one is going to want to show you their cards. No one is going to want to tell you, I'm absolutely going to take this player. You know, here, here, here are the 10 possible players we'll take with the 10th pick. Here are the 12 possible players we'll take with the 12th pick. Here are the 15 possible players we'll take with the 15th pick. I don't think anyone is going to entrust that information to anyone else, especially not to the league office, which can then take it and you don't know that they're not going to tell somebody about it. I mean, you t I'm not saying that anyone would, but you'd be foolish to share that information with the office that is the conduit for all 32 teams. So, hey, I don't think Penix and Knicks are going to be on the board when the round ends, but that would mean six quarterbacks taken in round one. But given all these teams out there that need a quarterback, yeah. that are hoping to find a franchise quarterback, and that seem to be willing to use that first-round pick on the possibility that they luck into a shortlist franchise quarterback, yeah, I think all six of those guys probably are going to be drafted in the first round. Yeah, I think so too, Mike. Quarterbacks tend to go earlier than later. I, I know they wanted to avoid the Will Levis situation from last year when he wasn't drafted in the first round. This is a low number, though, Mike, of, of the draft picks. Uh, it's prospects attending the draft, 13 last year, it was 17. Pre-COVID, it was 22 plus, all those pre-COVID years from 2015 to 2019, 28 draft picks attended uh, in 2015. So really low number, we've tended to go down in these numbers. Uh, and all of these guys, I think, are pretty much guaranteed of going in the first round. So there's not going to be that long wait in the green room this year of, somebody sitting there waiting it out. I think all of these guys are going to go pretty high, but JJ McCarthy is the one to me that stands out with the draft being in Detroit, doing what he did in Michigan and not being at the draft. I just think that's weird. And, and I don't know what happened. I don't know what the disconnect was, but to me, it's just weird that JJ McCarthy of all people is not at this draft. Yeah. And again, ex uh, my understanding is invitation yeah. was extended. He didn't get back to them. So they just moved on. They weren't going to beg. They weren't going to wait. They were just going to, you know, they got to do what they got to do. Th there is a school of thought out there and it is supported by other circumstantial evidence that the NFL is just choosing to not spend a lot of money on who attends the draft that they've restricted the numbers because it's cheaper you don't fly the kid there. And, you know, usually it's family members and it's hotel rooms. And I guess it all adds up. It's just this weird dichotomy. You've got a league that is getting closer and closer and closer to its stated goal of $25 billion in revenue by 2027. And they're pinching pennies about NFL Network and shutting down their morning program for five months and moving it to a free studio in L.A., even though it disrupts the lives of everyone connected to the program. And they let four respected members of the on-air talent pool go last week. And th there's, there's an element of we're going to choose the path that entails spending less money. And I haven't confirmed this yet, but there's also talk that they're going to have fewer remote setups this year with reporters at people's houses for the guys who aren't at the draft. So we'll see how it plays out. And if they are going cheap, it's going to be obvious in how it comes through in the production, the TV production. We'll see, you know, well, why aren't they at this person's house? Well, where's the roving reporter? Well, where's this person? Where's that person? We'll see it all play out in real time. But for now, 
tight list of invitees and the assessment that Penix and Knicks not locks in the top 15 or 20. I would disagree with that. But, you know, Will Levis lasted all the way through round one last year. And they probably and, – and I appreciate the fact they don't want to embarrass the player because it also embarrasses yeah. them. It makes it look like they don't know what their teams are going to do if they have guys there who last all the way through round one. Yeah, it does, Mike. And, it, you know, back when they invited the 28 or 28 showed up in 2015, they actually invited more than that. You had guys, they had guys who were drafted in the second round and I think into the third round, and they did that purposely. And obviously they aren't doing that now. They want the guys who are there to be drafted in the first round and move on. So I'm sure money is an issue in this thing. Otherwise, why wouldn't you invite second round and third round guys and and have guys there on the second day and the third day? Because to me, that's what makes the draft interesting when you're watching it on TV is the reactions of those players when they are drafted, when they get that phone call. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.